I've got all this display of water bottles from around the world from silly places like the Galapagos Islands and Fiji and so on. So, so think back to when you were at school and when you're doing a chemical reaction, when you want to mix things together, very often you use a solvent, a liquid, to dissolve them up. And in the chemical industry, the sorts of chemicals that are used are all very oil-like. In fact, they come from petroleum. And so the solvent that you have to use is also derived from petroleum to make everything mix. And usually, when you use these solvents, there's the danger that they can burn, and so you have fire risk, and also they can evaporate and cause atmospheric pollution. So what we're trying to do is to replace these solvents with water. Now there's a problem, of course, that as you know, oil and water don't mix. And so somehow you've got to find a way in making the oil-like chemicals mix with water. And it turns out that if you heat water up to high temperature, two or three hundred degrees centigrade under pressure, and rather like in a pressure cooker, then the bonds in the water break. And at high temperature, oil and water actually do mix. So you can imagine a process where you mix everything together cold, heat them up, and as you heat them up, the oil and the water mix, the reaction takes place, and when you finish, you cool it down, the water turns back to its ordinary form, and then the oily products just float to the top and can be separated. But you see, the point is if you do it continuously, I mean, yes, you have to put heat in to begin with, but if the chemical reaction produces heat, then it will heat the water itself, and chemical engineers can design cunning systems so that you use new material coming in to cool down what is already hot so that you can conserve the heat. And one of the reactions we work on at the moment is in fact to make the, one of the components that goes into plastic water bottles. It's called terephthalic acid. And at the moment this is made in <coughs> a solvent which is very similar to vinegar, acetic acid or ethanoic acid as school children call it. And the problem is that this doesn't take this <coughs> acid, the solvent, doesn't actually end up in the product. But the reaction, which is a sort of oxidation reaction between oxygen and the compound, burns up a lot of the solvent. In fact, 18% of the world's supply of this acid is burnt up in the reaction. And since this reaction is done on millions of tonne scale. This is a lot of acetic acid. And so we're trying to do this reaction in water, and the preliminary results are extremely exciting. And so in order to demonstrate to my students how important these chemicals are, I've got all this display of water bottles from around the world, from silly places like the Galapagos Islands and Fiji and so on. And my secretary is now getting rather cross about the number of these bottles. Well, quite a lot of them I've collected myself, and now people, when they travel abroad, come back and bring me the, the bottles as a souvenir. It's much cheaper for them to than something else. Uh, unfortunately, these new airline regulations mean sometimes they're not allowed to bring them on the plane.